Hello and welcome to another episode of The Liver Doc. So this episode starts with something quite sad. So I had this young man come into the emergency department with jaundice followed by altered behavior. He was confused and he was quite sick and he was immediately transferred to the intensive care unit. So this very healthy young man without any known diseases he has no diabetes no high blood pressure no thyroid diseases no autoimmune disorders he was not on any long term medical uh, medications any no long term drugs he was a teetotaler he never drank uh, he came in with jaundice and altered behavior so this is what we call as acute liver failure acute liver failure is when you have a, you have a healthy person with a healthy liver suddenly showing signs and symptoms of liver failure in the form of jaundice and encephalopathy so encephalopathy is basically brain failure and that happens because of a, a far rapidly failing liver so what was what was the cause of this liver failure so when we have a patient of acute liver failure we look at all the possible causes that we can identify to treat that cause of liver failure so in this young man we looked at all the known causes that we look for in a liver failure patient for example all the viral hepatitis acute viral hepatitis a e b then you look at any prescription drugs that he has been using previously in the last 3 months for example any anti tuberculosis drugs which can cause liver injury uh, old world pain killers there are certain antibiotics that can cause liver failure so none of these were actually uh, present in this patient none of the, this patient was not on any such medications then we looked at rare causes like autoimmune hepatitis rare viral infections none of these i mean all of these were negative so what was the cause of liver failure in this patient So this young man healthy 25 years of age we found out that he had undergone a hair transplant a couple of months back and he was put on uh, certain medications for his hair growth so he was on supplements for hair growth so we looked at those supplements and we found out that he was on a drug called finasteride which is actually given for uh, hair growth in men uh, which is not actually liver toxic there are no known reports of liver injury because of finasteride and minoxidil which is actually a lotion that you apply on the head So minoxidil was also very safe because it was externally used so that does not cause liver failure. Then we came across this particular supplement which contains a bunch of vitamins and some natural products which was given for hair growth. So this particular product had uh, green tea extract and borage seed oil. So perfectly safe right? Natural products with some vitamins what can what can it do? What harm can it do to you? and a lot of people all around the world consume such health supplements so these are health supplements and not drugs and a lot of people consume it so are health supplements dangerous can they kill you because they are supposed to improve your health are you sure that the health supplement that you are consuming right now is safe So this episode is all about what we call herbal and dietary supplements. So herbal and dietary supplements are marketed as food products and health supplements which means they do not come into the class of a drug or a medicine which means they don't require any testing in the form of beneficial trials in this in, for example uh, trials and studies needed to study their benefits in particular conditions nor do they require any studies to look at toxicity that is side effects because these are food supplements right they are marketed as food supplements so will you uh, test for uh, uh, the benefits of your morning breakfast in a trial to see if it's causing you any harm or benefit no because they are food people have been consuming food for many 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 centuries and we know that uh, certain foods are good for you certain foods are bad for you it's part of the evolutionary process that mankind has learned about so food supplements do not require any testing but does that mean that every supplement that you are having is actually safe so this is where this particular group of supplements come that is known as herbal and dietary supplements i am sure a lot of you would have had a lot of supplements but you would not realize what are what is specifically in those supplements that may be of use to you or that may actually harm you so first of all one must realize that health supplements are not required in a normal person or a healthy person for promotion of health 
or to prevent any disease because there is no specific study or any evidence which shows that consuming health supplements especially herbal and dietary supplements actually prevents any disease or uh, decreases any disease or cures any disease so these the, these do not come under the category of drugs so you can do without them so this is the most important and they are regulated by the food uh, health authorities not not the uh, the ones who look at drugs and medicines so you'll have these uh, food and safety organizations giving them a seal of approval that does not mean they are actually effective that does not mean that they are safe it just means that they have been prepared under uh, strict guidelines for their preparation that is they are manufactured in in good uh, factories under good uh, ambient conditions which has been you know uh, regulated by the health uh, by the food authorities so these food supplements are available everywhere for anybody to just go buy over the counter and have doctors can prescribe them anybody can prescribe them uh, you yourself can go and buy them and you know uh, have have a few on your own for how long how much ever long you want to have them the fact is that they are not safe so if you look at uh, the 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 way the herbal and dietary supplement industry has been growing you can actually see that along with that growth there is something else happening so if you look at the data from the united states where they have a very good uh, pharmacovigilance that is they look at uh, specific toxicities and safety of various products uh, through various networks uh, government and non government and they identify uh, new issues raise, uh, arising out of these uh, uh, dietary supplements and what they have identified is that the need for liver transplantation act is actually gone up much much higher than a few decades back in the united states and this is mostly because of consumption of herbal and dietary supplements and herbal and dietary supplements related liver failure so this is important the industry is growing and along with industry there is something very sinister happening and that is liver failure liver injury and loss of life so let us look at some important food supplement components that you must stay away from you might be having them right now so once this video is do, uh, over you can actually go back and check in your cupboards your food supplements or health supplements actually contain these so the first one is green tea extract so this young man uh, who was taking the uh, health supplement or the uh, dietary supplement for hair growth was actually having the supplement containing green tea extract and borage seed oil so green, green tea extract is very 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 well known and documented to cause liver injury and liver failure so mind you this is green tea extract not green tea you can drink your green tea you can enjoy your green tea about 2 to 3 cups a day it is fine in moderation it is fine but green tea extracts are quite dangerous because green tea extracts have very high levels of a particular compound known as epigallogalactin catechin which is known as egcg and high levels of egcg has been associated with severe liver injury and also liver failure requiring liver transplantation very classical example is herbalife so herbalife nutrition once they started in the us and once they were actually doing so well in the us a lot of liver injuries started getting reported and authorities found out that you know herbalife products contained green tea extracts and once separate studies on green tea extract showed that green tea extracts can cause liver injury herbalife removed the green tea extract part from their products and the liver injury rates came down and this is very true this has happened and this is documented i'll put those links uh, in the description below so you can go you can yourself go and read about them so once green tea part was removed supplements became safer so green tea extract liver injury liver failure requiring liver transplantation is very well known so please avoid supplements that contain green tea extracts because green tea extracts are not shown to actually promote any health condition or improve any disease condition and this is a fact number 2 is turmeric everyone's favorite everyone's greatest health supplement is turmeric especially for indians it's it's such an important aspect of their daily life and in the in the in the diet and also as part of their uh, health promotion but the fact is that none of the actual research shows that turmeric is useful for you in fact there are so many uh, write ups and studies and reviews and systematic analysis showing that there is no strong evidence to show that turmeric can actually benefit your health 
So in the morning, people uh, drink what something known as turmeric milk, where they mix a spoonful of turmeric with milk and have it, and they think that their immunity is actually bursting and boosting, which is actually wrong because if you consume, if you just consume directly turmeric, it does not get absorbed in your body; it gets destroyed in the stomach, and there is absolutely no benefit of turmeric consumption directly. That is why. many companies actually add piperin along with turmeric to increase its absorption but even that does not work out because uh, turmeric has actually no good clinical effects in any disease conditions and does not prevent any disease so the classical example is turmeric for cough and cold where even if you have turmeric or not your cough and cold will go away in 5 to 7 days time so turmeric does nothing to it so unnecessary having turmeric as a health supplement for longer duration has been shown to promote liver injury and some of these liver injuries were severe enough to cause liver transplantation and also turmeric has such specific compounds in it that act, that can actually interact with your immune system and cause a lot of autoimmune diseases within you so somebody who is healthy after long term use of turmeric can actually develop autoimmune diseases especially autoimmune hepatitis and this is very well documented so please look out for turmeric extracts in your uh, health supplements or your dietary supplements and please avoid them third is something known as tinospora cordifolia or what we call in india as giloy or guduchi so giloy has been promoted as an immune booster as an anti inflammatory as an antioxidant i mean you name it even in, as an anti cancer Uh, by a lot of these uh, uh, pseudo science and alternative medicine proponents especially from india uh, and giloy is actually part of a lot of is uh, part of lot of uh, health supplements especially uh, liver detox supplements so be careful about this particular herb giloy because what it actually does is that it completely disrupts your immune system and giloy has been shown to produce a major Uh, liver injury known as autoimmune hepatitis so this is herb induced autoimmune hepatitis and more than 100 cases have been uh, recorded from india itself and published in uh, peer reviewed literature and uh, a warning has been given by doctors uh, towards patients and general population not to consume giloy because giloy extracts can uh, lead to severe autoimmune uh, injury to the liver and also very important to note this is like a public public service uh, uh, announcement which the government will not tell you um, any person who already has an autoimmune disease like thyroid disorder for example hypothyroidism or diabetes or or lupus or they have history family history of autoimmune uh, diseases please do not consume giloy based supplements because giloy can precipitate a lot of Uh, uh immune uh, dysfunction within you and that can actually lead to autoimmune liver disease and autoimmune hepatitis and some of the patients that we have seen actually have undergone liver transplantation because they have consumed giloy and developed giloy induced liver failure so look for uh, giloy extracts in your uh, supplements and uh, drug formulations and please avoid them fourth is aloe vera so aloe vera has been marketed worldwide as an immune booster as something that can help you reduce your aging as an anti inflammatory even for anti, even for cancers people prescribe aloe vera in the alternative medicine uh, practices and uh, it has been well documented that aloe vera extracts can actually produce a lot of liver injury so aloe vera related liver injury has been very commonly uh, documented from the west and also from india and specifically aloe vera juice products have been uh, associated with uh, liver injury from the southeast asian countries and uh, aloe vera actually if you look at the data the evidences and the studies published there is no clinical benefit of aloe vera in any disease conditions prevention or treatment other than some data on uh, improvement in burns healing and wound healing with externally applied aloe vera so if you are actually eating and drinking aloe vera thinking that it is going to boost your immunity or uh, help you reduce your age uh, or your wrinkles please that is just a myth because aloe vera does none of that plus it comes with the harm of injuring your liver so be wary of aloe vera related products and aloe vera extracts and aloe vera infusions i'm not sure if uh, many people are aware of this particular uh, plant 
but noni juice has been uh, used for a lot of conditions ranging from arthritis to diabetes to improvement in uh, well being and appetite and, and and a whole list of uh, symptoms and disorders but there is no evidence or any trial or data that says that noni does anything good for human beings it doesn't and there has been reports of noni consumption that has led to liver failure in a host of patients and i have personally seen up to three patients who have developed noni induced liver injury and uh, one patient required a liver transplantation so noni juice does not actually improve any health condition it does not help in the treatment of any disease condition and noni extracts should be taken uh, cautiously uh, i would advise not taking noni at all because there are no proven benefits for uh, noni related uh, extracts or uh, juices ashwagandha is our next uh, important herb that is actually marketed heavily among a lot of people uh, in 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 a, for a lot of situations for example ashwagandha is marketed as an anti stress anti anxiety herb it is marketed uh, within gym trainers and bodybuilders as something that will boost their testosterone and cortisol levels that can help them uh, improve their muscle mass and their activity ashwagandha is also marketed as an immune booster and for a lot of diseases uh like diabetes mellitus and liver disorders and uh, you name it it's it's everywhere but what is the truth regarding ashwagandha so ashwagandha can actually lead to liver injury and liver failure there has been a list of uh, studies published on ashwagandha related liver failure mostly from the us and iceland where they had a long list of patients who consumed ashwagandha and developed various types of liver injuries uh, some some actually almost uh, prolonging to many many months so their recovery was so so slow and uh, it took them many weeks to to months to actually recover from the ashwagandha related liver injury and for what for no reason because ashwagandha has not been proven to be useful in any disease conditions and it cannot prevent any disease condition so ashwagandha related liver injury uh, in the form of severe cholestatic hepatitis that is uh, patients develop jaundice with severe itching and along with that some patients actually can develop liver failure but these are self limiting in the sense that if you stop ashwagandha these liver injuries can be reversed so ashwagandha based extracts please look out for them and ensure that you don't actually uh, opt for these extracts which have no evidence for their actual use in prevention of any disease or uh, as a health promotion so senna is so safe right i mean lot of people take senna for constipation uh but the fact is that uh senna when you talk about senna uh it's 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 three types of herbs actually it's it's it comes from this cassia family and uh you have senna occidentalis you have senna orientalis you have senna angulostifolia so uh commonly what we use is the angulostifolia senna which you can actually buy in the form of powders or uh, as capsules and extracts and people consume senna uh for the constipation this is it's it's a natural laxative as people claim it but if you actually go and look at the studies on senna you can actually see that um uh, none of the studies actually recommend senna because there are no good quality studies and the benefits of senna as a laxative is very short term in the sense that you keep using senna at some point your body does not respond to it so there is no point in using senna for a longer duration and you must be very careful about using the particular uh, senna product so angulostifolia uh, senna is usually supposed to be safe but there are uh, reports of liver injury occurring with this particular senna use and senna orientalis and senna occidentalis so both of them are known severe toxic uh, herbs under the senna family and uh, the senna occidentalis actually has been shown to produce something known as uh hepatomyeloencephalopathy which is actually a very severe multi system uh disease that happens in children who consume the leaves and pods of the particular of this particular plant and this happens during particular seasons in uttar pradesh and this has been noted noted by the authorities there and they actually warned the public not to have this particular uh, plant raw and senna orientalis has been shown to cause lot of side effects and organ failures in animals so even that is not uh recommended for use as a laxative by any clinical societies so using senna in the short term may be useful 
but do not use it in the long term and especially look for the type of senna that your extract has and stay away from the senna uh, that actually is proven to be very toxic. Now you'll see a lot of supplements for weight loss, right? I mean, weight loss is the hottest thing that people want. They don't want to exercise. They don't want to uh, take themselves to the gym or do a workout. They just want the shortcut of losing weight through herbal supplements or dietary supplements for that matter. And one of the commonest ingredient in a weight loss supplement is what you call it as uh, Malabar Tamarind, which is actually Garcinia Cambogia. So Malabar Tamarind is actually uh, very commonly used in uh, diet in South India and, and in some parts of India, uh, mostly in South Indian uh, dishes. But the extracts of Malabar Tamarind, that is the extract of Garcinia Cambogia, is very, very toxic to the liver. And this has been proven through various studies and reports and there are large reviews on it where they have identified hydroxy citric acid as one of the commonest uh, ingredient in uh, Malabar Tamarind or Garcinia Cambogia that can actually cause injury to the liver. So we have had patients who actually developed liver failure requiring a liver transplantation. You can imagine this. I mean patients consume this extract thinking that it will help them lose weight but they ultimately end up with a new liver. So it, it is that bad. In the sense, there are no studies or evidences to show that Garcinia Cambogia consumption can actually reduce your weight. And on top of that, patients and people, they actually go and consume this blindly and end up with more problems. So look for Garcinia Cambogia extracts in your uh, health supplement. If it is there, please throw it out into the garbage and never use it again because it does not help you lose weight and it does not help you uh, improve your health condition or disease condition in any manner. The next is fenugreek. So fenugreek is methi. So I know a lot of people consume fenugreek or methi soaked water for their diabetes and control of sugars. And uh, this is all good from a traditional sense because I'm, I'm sure our parents and their parents, they, they would have been uh, telling every generation that, you know, this is healthy and this is helpful. But the, the truth is that fenugreek or methi contains a lot of uh, strong plant compounds which are known as caumarins or caumarinoids and what these compounds do is that they actually thin your blood which means you have a higher chance of developing bleeding complications. So we have had patients, liver disease patients consuming fenugreek extracts or fenugreek uh, decoctions in the form of uh, you know boiling water and extracting them and drinking that particular extract uh, coming with severe bleeding into the skin, into the abdomen, uh, into the brain because it thins the blood and actually it causes more harm, causes more of bleeding uh, side effects. And a lot of diabetes patients actually consume other antiplatelet medications, other blood thinners, for example, aspirin, uh, warfarin. You know, they'll, they'll be consuming these uh, actual blood thinners. And on top of that, if they consume fenugreek also as an extract form or as a decoction, that actually worsens their bleeding profile and they have a higher chance of developing severe bleeding related complications for example a, ble a stroke a bleeding into the brain so diabetes patients who are on multiple medications including antiplatelet medicines and other blood thinners please do not take fenugreek extracts or drink fenugreek decoctions or please tell your physician that you're doing this so that they know and they can actually tell you rightly to stop it because once you start developing complications of bleeding internally then it's, it's difficult for someone to manage such a patient. So best is to go for preventive medicine and avoid such supplements that are of no use to you and are more harmful. The last uh, herb that I'll be talking to you about is something known as Chinese or American skull cap. I'm sure you would, now, would not have actually uh, looked into this particular supplement, but I'm sure a lot of you who have knee pains, joint pains, arthritis, you would have, somebody would have prescribed this to you at some point. And uh, un unfortunately, a lot of modern medicine doctors prescribe this. Uh, I mean, all of these are also prescribed by modern medicine doctors, which is actually not right by the patient. Uh, if you look at this particular skull cap extract, you will see that it is pre prescribed for osteoarthritis and other arthritis problems. Um, and skull cap, Chinese skull cap and American skull cap has been associated with severe liver injury requiring liver transplantation. So be careful about this particular herb where no studies has been done. Its scientific name is Cutellaria. And uh, if, you, if you are on any medicines or supplements or, or any herbal uh, formulations for arthritis, please look into 
the ingredients of this uh, ingredients on the back side of the, of your supplement and see if it contains skull cap if it does contain skull cap please avoid it and tell your doctor that you don't want it and and to give you or prescribe you something much safer and effective so i hope this episode was useful for you it helped you understand the big industry that dietary supplements is especially herbal and dietary supplements and how useless they are for actually health promotion but can also cause a lot of diseases that you don't deserve so prevention is better than cure and do not use these supplements thinking that they are going to detox you they are actually going to cause you more harm stay safe stay healthy and until the next time signing off Music